just the other day in class, we were talking about evaporators. And I got to thinking, you know, a lot of people, they know that the evaporator is supposed to absorb the heat. But one of the questions that I always ask in class is, how much refrigerant should you have in there, first of all? Second of all, what exactly is the evaporator doing? So when we look at this, we see that we're going to have the liquid line coming up like this. The liquid line is going to come up and is going to go into the metering device. This metering device creates a pressure drop. Right here creates this pressure drop. It goes into the evaporator and then eventually comes out and it goes out the suction line. Now, this is going to be, of course, my liquid line here. We know that if we were to hook up gauges here on my suction line, we would want a pressure that's going to keep it right around, let's say if it's R22, 68. If it was 410A, it would keep it at about 118 PSIG because both of these would equal what? 40 degrees Fahrenheit. 40 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's what we want. Now, we're supposed to have liquid coming into the metering device. How much liquid? Well, this should be 100% 100% liquid coming in to the metering device. That creates a pressure drop. We know it's supposed to be about 75% liquid, 25% vapor, and as it travels through, we have less and less liquid, more and more vapor, until we get to this point right here. I always like to call this my pre determined point. Predetermined point because the engineer has figured out that to have enough cooling, we're going to have to have enough refrigerant coming in here and boiling off right there so that it can superheat the refrigerant enough. Now typically we say that this might be 50 degrees because you have 50 minus the 40 that gives us 10 degrees of superheat. Okay, so they, these are ideal conditions right here. But this evaporator, what is this evaporator supposed to do to the refrigerant? First thing it's going to do is, as it travels through here, is going to boil the refrigerant. Now, typically we think of boiling things, boiling liquid, as very hot. But remember, that's just how we have been brought up to think. Boiling, what does that mean? It means that it's changing state very, very rapidly. Because it's changing state rapidly, then it's boiling. If it's changing state slowly, then it's going to evaporate. Now we call this the evaporator, but the refrigerant inside is actually boiling. It boils so they could be 100% vapor after this point. Now, we know it's going to absorb heat. Where's the heat coming from? The heat is going to be coming from inside the house. So in here, for example, we're going to have our fan. We have our fan here, and this fan is going to draw the air through here and push it up through here. Of course, we have to have a filter, and the air comes in here. How much air? Well, we need approximately, let's say, 400 CFM per ton. That's how much we need to have going in there because that is just the right amount of airflow to bring us the right amount of heat to evaporate that refrigerant. So as we're moving this, it's gonna stay right there. If we cut this down to, let's say, 300, no longer 400, then what's gonna happen? It's gonna take longer for this to boil, and it's gonna move down this way. When it moves down this way, what happens? Our superheat is gonna drop. Now we're superheating, let's say our new predetermined point move there. We're only superheating in this small area. We're supposed to be superheating in a larger area, but now only in this small area. Because of that, this pressure here is gonna drop. And unfortunately, one of the things that people do out there is they don't take superheat readings. You've got to take superheat readings because once they see that this pressure has dropped, what do most technicians do? They add refrigerant. Once you add refrigerant, you're pushing this predetermined point down this way 
and your superheat is going to drop too much. Now, what happens when you move this down this way, and then it keeps moving down and down and down? It gets to your compressor. When it gets to the compressor, what is that called? That's called flood back. You're flooding the compressor because you're flooding the compressor. That's going to kill the compressor. Why? Well, because refrigerant's a very, very good cleaner. Very good cleaner. So it gets in there and it cleans all the bearings. Because it cleans the bearings, it removes the oil from the bearings. The bearings are going to lock up. They lock up and now the compressor's not running anymore. Once the compressor burns up because it locked up, technicians will come and say, hey, we have a bad compressor. It locked up. It's an electrical problem. It burned up. Okay. They don't know that it's locked up. They just know that it burned up. So they say it's an electrical problem. And they go ahead and replace it. They don't find the cause of the failure. They say, okay, it's just a bad compressor. So they move on. They replace it and then move on. Meanwhile, once they recharge the system, they don't check superheat. If your superheat is down here too far again, what's going to happen? It's going to kill the compressor again. And then it's going to fail. So we need to always make sure that you check superheat because that's what it's supposed to do. Now, what, what happens if your air is coming in right here? Let's say it was coming in at 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Now it goes up to 80. You have more heat coming into this coil. Your suction pressure now is going to go up. When that suction pressure goes up and people don't take superheat readings, what happens is this predetermined point now is going to move up this way. Once it moves up this way, look what you're doing. You're superheating in a larger area. Because you're superheating in a larger area, now, <clears throat> you're not going to cool like you're supposed to. You're superheating in a large area. You're not cool like you're supposed. To. You're not cooling like you're supposed to. Your suction pressure has gone up. A lot of times, technicians will say, "Unit's overcharged," and they recover, or remove refrigerant. No, you have got to take superheat readings. Always, always take your superheat readings. Don't ever forget. You have to look at that. The airflow is going to affect the superheat readings. If your airflow is less, you have a dirty filter, a dirty coil, somebody closes off dampers, what's going to happen? Less airflow, which means that now you don't have enough heat, suction pressure drops. So now you have to keep all these things in mind when you go out there and troubleshoot a system. Okay, check your superheat. Look at your pressures and think about what's happening in the system before you rush in, add refrigerant or recover refrigerant. Keep all these things in mind. I hope this helped. Name is Julio, Aircon Academy. Make sure that you follow me on Facebook and or subscribe to my channel on YouTube. Thank you.